Have you ever wondered what would happen if the sun suddenly erupted and sent a massive blast of plasma and magnetic fields towards the Earth? Well, you don't have to wonder anymore, because that's exactly what happened recently. When a solar eruption, also known as a coronal mass ejection, CME, occurred on the sun's surface. And guess what? It's heading our way. This is not a drill, folks. This is a real and rare phenomenon that could have some amazing and surprising effects on our planet and our lives. In this video, we will tell you everything you need to know about this solar storm, what it means, why it is important, and how you can watch it. We will also explain how a solar storm can impact different systems and animals, and what are the benefits and challenges of witnessing this cosmic spectacle. So, buckle up and get ready for a wild ride because this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see the beauty and power of the Sun-Earth connection. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Before we get into the details of the current solar storm, let's first understand what a geomagnetic storm is and how it is measured. A geomagnetic storm is a disturbance of the Earth's magnetosphere, which is the region of space around the Earth that is influenced by the Earth's magnetic field. The magnetosphere protects us from the harmful radiation and particles from the sun and other sources in space. However, sometimes the magnetosphere can be disturbed by external factors, such as a coronal mass ejection, which is a large-scale explosion of plasma and magnetic fields from the sun's corona and the outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere. It can travel at speeds ranging from 250 to 2,500 kilometers per second and reach the Earth in one to five days. When a CME interacts with the Earth's magnetic field, it can cause a geomagnetic storm, which is measured by the planetary K index, which ranges from zero to nine, with zero indicating no geomagnetic activity and nine indicating extreme geomagnetic storm. The levels of geomagnetic storm severity are classified as G1, minor, G2, moderate, G3, strong, G4, severe, and G5, extreme. Each level has different effects on different systems and animals, which we will discuss later. But for now, let's focus on the current geomagnetic storm watch issued by the NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, which is the official source of space weather alerts and forecasts. According to NOAA, the CME that occurred on September 15, 2023, has a potential of reaching G2, moderate level. This means that there is a possibility of seeing aurora lights or northern lights in some parts of the US and other regions of the world. The aurora lights are caused by the interaction of charged particles from the sun with the Earth's atmosphere, creating colorful displays of light in the sky. The aurora lights are usually seen near the poles where the Earth's magnetic field is the strongest but sometimes they can be seen at lower latitudes, depending on the strength of the geomagnetic storm. According to NOAA, the aurora lights might be visible in some parts of the US, such as Alaska, Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Maine, and New Hampshire. However, the visibility of the aurora lights also depends on other factors, such as the weather, the location, and the time of the night. So. If you are lucky enough to be in one of these areas, you might want to keep an eye on the sky and hope for a clear and dark night. Now that we know what a geomagnetic storm is and how it can create aurora lights, let's talk about what else it can do. A geomagnetic storm can have various impacts on different systems and animals, some of which are positive and some of which are negative. Let's take a look at some of the examples of how a geomagnetic storm can affect communication, navigation, power grids, satellites, and wildlife. First, the communication. A geomagnetic storm can affect communication systems by causing radio blackouts, interference, and distortion. This can affect radio signals such as AM, FM, shortwave, and ham radio, as well as television and telephone signals. For example, in 1989, a geomagnetic storm caused a radio blackout that disrupted the communication between the ground and the Space Shuttle Discovery, which was carrying a crew of five astronauts. The blackout lasted for about 15 minutes, 
during which the astronauts had no contact with the mission control. Fortunately, the blackout did not cause any serious problems, and the shuttle landed safely. Second, the navigation. It can affect navigation systems by causing errors in GPS signals, compass readings, and flight paths. This can affect the accuracy and reliability of navigation devices, such as smartphones, cars, planes, and ships. For example, in 2011, a geomagnetic storm caused a GPS error of about 10 meters, which affected the navigation of some airplanes and ships. The error was not large enough to cause any accidents, but it did cause some delays and inconveniences. Third, the power grids. A geomagnetic storm can affect power grids by inducing currents in transmission lines, transformers, and generators, which can cause voltage fluctuations, power outages, and damage. This can affect the supply and distribution of electricity, as well as the operation of various devices and appliances that depend on electricity. For example, in 1989, a geomagnetic storm caused a power outage that affected about 6 million people in Quebec, Canada. The outage lasted for about nine hours, during which the people had no lights, heat, or water. The outage also affected some parts of the US, such as New York and New England. Fourth, the satellites. By exposing satellites to radiation, charging, and drag, it can degrade their performance, damage their components, and alter their orbits. This can affect the functioning and lifespan of satellites, as well as the services and data they provide, such as weather, communication, navigation, and surveillance. For example, in 2003, a geomagnetic storm damaged a Japanese satellite called ADOS-2, which was designed to monitor the Earth's environment. The damage caused the satellite to lose its power and communication, and eventually, it was declared a total loss. Finally, the wildlife. A geomagnetic storm can affect wildlife by disrupting their biological clocks, migration patterns, and magnetic scents, which can affect their behavior, orientation, and survival. This can affect various animals, such as birds, fish, whales, turtles, bees, and bats, that use the Earth's magnetic field as a guide for their movements and activities. For example, in 2014, a geomagnetic storm caused some birds to fly in the wrong direction, some fish to swim in the wrong direction, and some whales to strand on the shore. The storm also affected some bees to lose their way back to their hives, and some bats to lose their ability to echolocate. After learning about the impacts of a geomagnetic storm, you might be wondering how to watch the aurora lights and where to find the best viewing locations. Well, don't worry. We have some tips for you that will help you enjoy this amazing phenomenon. Here are some of the things you need to know and do if you want to watch the aurora lights. The first and most important thing you need to do is to find a place that has a dark, clear, and open sky, away from city lights and pollution. The darker and clearer the sky, the better the chances of seeing the aurora lights. The open sky will also allow you to see more of the horizon and the sky, where the aurora lights usually appear. The next thing you need to do is to use some online tools that will help you find the best viewing locations, as well as the best time and date to watch the aurora lights. Some of the online tools that you can use are Aurora Forecast, Aurora Service, and Aurora Alerts, which provide real-time maps, alerts, and predictions of aurora activity. These tools will also tell you the level of geomagnetic storm, the K-index, and the aurora oval, which are the indicators of the intensity and location of the aurora lights. The last thing you need to do is to dress warmly and bring a camera. The aurora lights usually occur at night when the temperature is low, so you need to wear warm clothes and layers to keep yourself comfortable and cozy. You also need to bring a camera preferably a DSLR or a smartphone with a good camera to capture the beauty and colors of the aurora lights. You might also want to bring a tripod, a remote shutter, and a wide-angle lens to get the best shots and avoid camera shake. So, there you have it, folks. Everything you need to know about the solar storm, the geomagnetic storm, and the aurora lights. 
This is a rare and exciting opportunity to witness the beauty and power of the Sun-Earth connection, and we hope you don't miss it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we will try to answer them. Thank you for watching and see you next time.